Welcome back to the bench. Uh, today's patient is a Juno 106, which um, has only been on for about 20 minutes, but has already shown symptoms of sticking notes and weirdness. So if we boot her into test mode by holding down the key transpose button, and then press the two poly buttons in, we can then see the round robin number, see which voice or voices might be causing a problem. So pretty straightforward, looks like voice 6 needs a bit of attention. So the first line of attack is to take the voice chip out, try and strip off all the plastic covering, uh, resolder the chip, preferably put it in a socket, um, and see if that works. Let's whip her out. And there we are. It's pretty straightforward, nice linear power supply. Big aluminium heatsink for the voltage regulators. Um, up the top here we have the front panel PCB with all the knobs in. And this board on the left is all the analog I.O. MIDI. Um, the microprocessor board. I previously installed a battery holder when the battery needs changing. And here is the analog voice board, which is what we're going to have to take out. These are the voice chips here. And to remove the six wood screws now. So it looks like we have the DAX from the microprocessor on this board as well. Very nice, simple, dual layer board by the looks of it. So it turns out Roland have nicely marked all these voice channels. So this is the one that we need to take out, voice 6. Now this solder is pretty old, I'm going to see if I can remove as much as I can. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to move. I'm going to go in with the Amtec, and if this doesn't work, I'll have a go with the heat gun. Okay, so I think next I'm just going to clean up the board, suck out any remaining solder and clean it with alcohol. You can clearly see some blistering here in the plastic covering, so something is definitely going on. So I'm going to give it a bit of a scrape on the plastic to see if we can get some acetone to soak into the plastic a bit quicker. This plastic container is not ideal. Um, I'll get this going, then I might transfer it into a different container.
So it's been in here a couple of hours now. Looks like it's getting a bit translucent. To help speed up this process, I'm just going to chip away any loose bits of plastic and then re put it back in the bath. These fresh cuts should allow the acetone to soak into new areas. Okay, this is coming along. Um, before I put it back in for another soak, I'm just going to fit a socket onto the board so if this repair doesn't work, it can be easily replaced for another chip. I'm going to need to cut off this unnecessary leg so it fits into the same footprint as the original chip. So if this repair doesn't work, we won't even need to take out the board at all. Unfortunately, I ran out of space on my phone, so I lost the recordings of me resoldering, but um, I've gone through every pin and just resoldered everything. So now we can place this chip into the new socket. So it's worth saying at this point that I thought I found some dry joints on the IC connections, um, and I actually think that is probably the most likely candidate for these problems. I'm sure components do fail as well, but um, there are definitely some dry joints in there. So, fingers crossed. So I'd say this is a great success to fix this uh, completely. I guess only time will tell. Um, but I'll give this back to the owner and uh, I'll keep you posted if there's any change.